Hello. In this module, we would like to develop formulas to find properties such as enthalpy, entropy, etc. for a solid or liquid as the working fluid. We're going to model solid and liquid with some simplifying assumptions. And let's lay down this assumption first. So what is our first assumption is V is a constant. So the specific volume will be assumed to be a constant for a solid or liquid. In other words, it's known as the incompressible assumptions. Density, the inverse of specific volume is also constant, obviously. That's an assumption, obviously. So suppose you model copper as a solid liquid model with the solid liquid model. So if somebody says, I heat up copper from 50 degree to 500 degree Celsius, tell me how much will be the change in specific volume. We know that there is thermal expansion, change of copper will probably expand. But if you use the SL model, by this assumption, you must say the volume is a constant. So therefore, there is no change in volume. We must be true to our model. In thermodynamics, this little change in volume that really occurs is almost uh, immaterial. Anyways, what is our second assumption? Is that CV is constant. CV, recall, is the specific volume uh, at const uh, the specific heat at constant volume. So these are th these two thermodynamic properties V and C V out of this group of P T V U H S C V and C P. Now we know that C V and V are basically material properties because they are constant. Constant means they depend on the identity of material, of course. So if you select copper, you get a certain value. If you pick say liquid water, you get another values, another pair of values, etc. So these are material properties. So our goal is would be to how to find U, H, and S, especially, and how to find C, P. That will be our, our task today. So let's start with U, start with U. We know from the relations we have developed that change in U is given by del u del t c v d t plus del u del v at constant temperature d v. If you go back to our previous module, this is our, if you recall, this is our u relation. That applies to any pure substance, not just solid or liquid or a gas. We can apply it to any pure substance. So we start with this general relation and immediately recognize that, hey, V is a constant, so what will be dV? Change in dV must be zero. So we simplify this relationship to dV equals CV dT, and therefore if we integrate this from state 1 to 2, we can immediately understand U2 minus U1 must be equals CV is a constant, we can take it outside the integral, so therefore, it becomes CVT2 minus T1. A very simple relationship indeed. So we found a way in which we can find the change in internal energy if we know the change in temperature. So we can see that change internal energy of a solid will change only with temperature. If there's a big change in pressure, if you subject a copper block to a very high pressure and somebody asks, what will be the energy of the copper block? Will it be higher or lower? it will not change because the energy, internal energy of a copper block would be a function of temperature alone if you use the SL model. <clears throat> All right, so now let's take a look at enthalpy. Now that we know already that enthalpy is given by U plus PV by definition, so therefore we can write delta H, which is H2 minus H1, is nothing but U plus PV at 2 minus U plus PV at state 1. Rearranging, we can write U2 minus U1 plus PV2 minus PV1, which is U2 minus U1, plus volume is a specific volume is a constant, recall, so you can take that out. 
So here we go. We found a relationship for change in enthalpy, which depends on change in U, which we already know. The formula for which is Cv T2 minus T1 plus V P2 minus P1. So we see that change in enthalpy depends on temperature and pressure. If you recall, we also have a direct relationship. Let's see what is the consequence of of the different relation differential relation in terms of CP that we developed before. So this was developed as del H del P at constant temperature dP. So this is a separate formula. Let's see if what this relationship leads to. So see we don't know whether CP is a constant or not. Let's leave it that way. But we also recognize that this different derivative we can evaluate because we know H equals U plus PV. That's by definition. So therefore, del H del P at constant temperature will be what? Del del P of U, which is a function of temperature alone, if you recall at constant temperature, right? Plus V is always a constant, so V comes out and this will be just del P del P at constant temperature. UT is a constant because temperature doesn't change. Temperature is held constant in this derivative, so therefore this goes to zero. So del P del P is just one, so we end up with V. So we can substitute V for this term and we can get dH to be Cp dt plus V dp. If you compare this equation, suppose you call this equation 2 with that with equation 1, well, if we go back and, and take a look at since this is this equation is in terms of delta H, we can e immediately convert it in terms of dE if you want. dH means just a little change in enthalpy would be T2 minus T1 will become dT. I hope you understand this. The ch delta H is a change in H, H2 minus H1. A the difference between delta H and dH is that when delta H is very small, we call it dH. And Cb is a constant, so when T2 minus T1 is very small, we call it dT. V is a constant, P2 minus we are calling dP. So if this equation we call to be equation 1, and this one we call equation 2, and if you compare the two equations, you will notice the conclusion becomes that for SL model, Cp is nothing but Cv. So now we found out that not only we can find change in Eu, change in H, we also know Cp must be equal to Cv. Now let's go evaluate how to change, find change in entropy. For that, let's begin with the TDS, the first TDS relationship, TDS equals du plus PdV. If we start from this relationship, we immediately notice that, hey, V is a constant, so therefore this goes away. dV means change in V. V can never change. Specific volume is a constant for the SL model. I mean, V, equal, v is a constant for the SL model. So therefore, TDS or DS becomes, we already proved DU, again going back, the U, well, we showed U2 minus E1 is Cv, T2 minus T1, but we already showed that du equals Cv, del, so we can write this relationship if we want. Change in U equals Cv dt is something we already know. So therefore, if we come back and substitute that, du is Cv times dt divided by t. Now 
Now if we integrate for from state 1 to 2, change in entropy, which is S2 minus S1. Look at the convention delta S is always S2 minus M1. Delta something would be always expressed like the delta U, delta H, delta S, etc. S2 minus S1 should be, CV is a constant, so it goes outside the integral. There we have it. So we found an expression for delta S, CV ln T2 over T1. We know that CV and CP are equal, so we can as well write that as CP ln T2 by T1. It doesn't matter. So let's summarize. The SL model equations tells us what? First, it tells us V is constant. Then it says CP equals CV is constant. So somebody can tell you CP or CV of a particular. So these are both material properties. Delta U is CV, T2 minus T1. Delta H is CV, T2 minus T1 plus V, P2 minus P1. And finally, delta S is CV, ln T2 over T1. So that's the summary. <clears throat> so given a material, you've got to find the properties, the material properties. To do so, if you go to the property tables, and you will find the table A, you know, if you notice there, there'll be common properties. If you click solid liquids, table A1, notice that it gives CP equals CV, the values for solids on the left and liquids on the right. So you can, density is given, so obviously specific volume is inverse of that. Molar mass is another molar property, material property, as I mentioned. So for various common substances, liquids and solids, there are there are different properties given. Sometime, even though we assume the properties are constant, they give several values at different, say for water, liquid water, they give values of density, CV, etc., different temperature. Well, in a given problem, it is just to improve the accuracy. Suppose you want to use a cell model involving water, which is at 50 degrees, so obviously picking these values will give you a little better accuracy than if the water is at, let's say, 25 degrees. But that doesn't really matter. You can pick any values for water and you will get very reasonable answer with very little uh, error. One more thing to mention here uh, when we are talking about table, by the way, if you click on the table again, it will close. So it kind of toggles, pretty convenient. Now, even if you find PT, VUHS, recall that we need some other equations to find all the other other extrinsic and, and, and system properties. For that, those equations are again listed in table J. So I would suggest you print out table J, the equation sheet, and you will notice that it has the governing equation that we developed followed by, this is the, this is a very important sheet of equations. So the first block is the general relation. These are valid for any material. Notice that density is inverse of specific volume, kinetic energy, potential energy, E, J, H, everything that we know are all expressed here. These equations are always true. So is the definition of CV, CP, TDS equation. These are always true. And this is the SL model that we just developed. And just one side note on SL model. Suppose Someone says entropy doesn't change in a, in a process. Suppose someone, you know, suppose someone says water is flowing through a pump and for some reason entropy is not changing. You know, if entropy doesn't change, delta S equals zero, T2 and T1 must be equal because ln of one is zero. So a corollary to that is if S equals constant implies T equals constant for the SL model. We'll stop here and oh before we stop let me just show you how do you launch a, a, a test calc to to evaluate a state. So if you go to test calc uh, you can 
launch a system state or a flow state test cell. Uh, if you go to system state, just click on the SL model. There we have it. If you go to this tab, then it will launch. Okay, you have to click here and you have to ask it to allow Java and then it launches and to finding the properties is very simple. You select your material. Suppose you say my material is uh, copper and if you do a calculate immediately you'll notice the material properties, molar mass, CV, etc. are calculated. Now if I if I enter say a temperature, let's say we say copper block is at 200 degrees Celsius, you expect we know that entropy and specific volume are uh, sorry entropy and uh, u are function of temperature alone so that should be calculated notice that that is what is done now enthalpy is not found but if we because enthalpy is a function of pressure and temperature so if i enter pressure now suppose we say enter pressure suppose we say pressure is 600 kpa we can calculate to find enthalpy Notice you cannot enter enthalpy now, even if you click here, you do not accept a value because enthalpy now can be calculated from pressure. The, the, the desk calc is not only useful for verifying a manu manual solution, but it will also give you, allow you to, for instance, just to figure out, for instance, if you draw a, a you know, ST diagram, that how entropy changes with temperature. So, this is the particular state we developed. You can find many, many different states, or you can just say, hey, show me a constant pressure line, and you can see how, how entropy changes with temperature. It looks like a straight line, because here the variation is not much, but suppose, uh, just suppose that we, we increase the range, look, the line looks a logarithmic line. These buttons can be used to zoom the graph, right? That's what I used. This is a constant pressure line. Anyway, there are many, many tools in this test cell that you can use to improve your understanding of the SL model. Just play with it and see how, say, internal energy changes with temperature, how enthalpy changes with temperature and pressure, etc. I'll stop here and let's go and solve the problem in the next module before we move to the next model.